Hello, I'm Jason with scienceandmath.com. Today what we're going to do is what we call color changing milk. It doesn't sound very nice, it doesn't sound like it's an amazing experiment, but I guarantee you if you do this at home, your jaw will kind of drop the first time you do it because it's really, really cool and it's really, really colorful looking. So everything for this experiment you probably already have in your house. The first thing you'll need is some kind of a plate to hold the mixture, right? So a paper plate is fine. You'll need a glass of milk, right? You will need some detergent, some dish soap. This is what we use in the, in the kitchen counter and in the sink. This is Dawn dish soap. You can use anything you like, but Dawn seems to work the best. You will need some food coloring, right? I have four different kinds here. They usually come four, four to a box, so any color works fine. You can use one color or all four colors. And then you will need also a cotton swab. So as you can see, everything we have here is something that most people probably have in their kitchen. So what I'm going to do is rearrange things here. Okay, now what we've done here is put our plate front and center and moved all of our other ingredients off to the side so we can see what happens. The first thing you want to do is put your milk in the plate. Now this milk, you can use really any kind of milk you want. There's nothing special about it. It works better with whole milk then it will work with 2% or fat-free milk and you'll see why in just a minute. So use regular whole milk and what you do is you just pour it into your plate until you get a nice little layer. Just a thin layer like that is really all you need. You can do a little bit more if you like, right? So make sure the entire bottom is covered. And what I like to do is give it a nice count, count to 10 or so, because what you really want is for this milk to not be moving at all. You want it to be completely motionless. So five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. So it's been sitting there. We don't see any bubbles moving. The next thing you want to do is take your food coloring. Here I have, again, four different kinds of food coloring. It doesn't matter, you can use your favorite colors. And what we're going to do is put some drops. We're not going to spread them out, we're just going to kind of put some drops right on top of each other until we have a nice, a nice little red dot there. Here is blue. And you want to try to keep them separated. It'll just, it'll make it a little bit more impressive as you can, as you'll see in just a moment. So we have the nice blue drop here. And then we're going to do the green drop right below. like that. And then finally, I guess you could call this orange. And some kits, some food coloring kits may have different colors. It all works just fine. Really, the food coloring doesn't have anything to do with this experiment. The only reason we're putting food coloring in is so we can see what happens. Uh, because milk is white, and so what's going to happen in a minute, the milk's going to start moving. We want to be able to see it. The next thing you want to do is take your uh, Dawn dish soap or whatever dish soap you have and a cotton swab and you want to dip it in there. You don't want a thick glob like that. You want to kind of work it off on the side until you, you have a good bit of soap there, but it's not dripping off, okay? Just like this. And then I want you to watch carefully as we actually place that inside of the milk. Watch carefully what happens at the moment we push it in. Here we go. Three, two, one, go. Look at that. The milk just kind of goes nuts. It completely spreads out. The green kind of completely intersected everything else, and it goes out. Let's go over here to the orange and touch the orange and see what happens. The orange flies everywhere, okay? We'll go over here to the blue. The blue goes everywhere. So notice that as we're holding it here, the milk continues to move. You see it's continuing to move out from the, po the point. We're not really moving the Q-tip. The Q-tip is staying motionless, but the milk is is going. Now we can use the other side of the Q-tip to kind of get a fresh, see if we can get it going even better. And let's see what happens. We'll try this side over here and that starts to move. It basically wherever you touch this Q-tip, the milk food coloring solution is going to tend to move out away from it. Now notice what's happening now. As I do it more and more, the effect is not as strong. See when I first put that very first dot in there, uh, things moved really, really rapidly and now now I can just grab a whole bunch of soap and just drop it in there and not that much is happening. You can see it's not really doing the same thing. So you have to ask yourself as a scientist, how is this possible? How is this working? Well, obviously it's an interaction between the milk and the soap, right? Because the food coloring, we had the food coloring in with the milk and nothing happened. It just sat there. At the moment we dropped soap in there, you know, it started radiating and going away from the point that we put the soap in there. We didn't have to move the soap around, we just stuck it in there and the milk just continually kind of shoots away from the point that we put it in there. And also, as we do it more and more and more and more and more, 
the, basically the experiment stops working. So that's kind of going to factor into what's going on here. What's happening is, this is an example of how soap really works. Notice, what do we use soap for? We use it when we have our hands that are greasy, maybe we, we've got some fat or something on our hands or some oil, and we want to get rid of it, right? So if you put that under water and you try to wash your hands without any soap, uh, and you have really oily hands or fat hands or something on your hands that's really fattening, it's going to be difficult to get off. But you put a good quality dish soap on your hands, you rub them around really good, you put them under the sink, and you can actually start to feel your hands getting clean. What's happening there is this soap is not just a blue formula in the bottle, it's specially made to basically bond to those fat molecules uh, and to those proteins that are in things like bacon grease and things that are in like oil and, and, su and such like that. In this case, there's also fat inside the milk and there's also proteins inside of the milk. That's one of the reasons why milk is so good for you, right? So what's happening whenever you wash your hands is that soap is bonding. It's actually connecting to the fat molecules, to the proteins. It's actually bonding to those molecules and then the water is able to wash it away. So it kind of goes out there and it latches on to those molecules of, of the fats and then the water actually is able to wash it away. In this case we have a nice surface of milk, right, which has fats and proteins baked into the milk that's just part of the milk. We put the food coloring there just so we can see what happens and at the moment that we put the, uh, the Q-tip into the solution, what happens is the soap starts to start bonding with those proteins and it causes the milk to start to move because what happens is those proteins and those fats, they very, very, you can sort of think of them as being agitated. They're bonding to that soap, they're moving away from the soap, and they start to swirl because of the chemical reaction with the soap, the same way that we're able to wash our hands clean. That's part of what's happening. The other part is that the soap is actually breaks down the surface tension of the milk. So if you look carefully at a glass of water or at a glass of milk, you can kind of see that skin that's right on top. You know, you can kind of dip your finger into the very top of a cup of milk or a glass of water and you'll see the skin there on top. We call it the surface tension. That's just because of the water that's inside of the milk and the way that it bonds, right? And it creates that kind of skin. Soap immediately destroys that skin. Uh, that surface tension and that's just because of the reaction that's going on as well there, the bonding that's going on. So there's two things, the surface tension is disrupted and also the fats and the proteins start bonding with the soap. Those two things together cause the milk to physically start to move because of all the agitation going on and trying to bond with the soap that we're just putting in the water and it starts to move away from the point that the soap is put. Right? And that is the reason why the milk starts moving. The food coloring has nothing to do with it. Food coloring is mostly water. The only reason we put food coloring in is so we could actually see the swirling motion. So that's the science behind it. It's actually bonding the soap with the fats and that's causing, along with the surface tension, causing the, the milk to start to, 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 to get into motion. And that's why we see the nice colorful changes there. You can do this over and over and over again with a new batch of milk. However, notice that the experiment, the, um, the chemical reaction really stopped working. We can put it back in there. You can see it doesn't really do anything. The reason is that as the milk starts to mix, the soap that we're putting into the milk starts to mix with the body of milk that we have. So in other words, after the swirling continues for a while, the soap that we're putting in there gets mixed in with the milk and then of course everything's already happened. So you can't just continue adding soap because all of the fats have already bonded, everything's already done, the surface tension's already not, you know, not really the same as it was and so the effect is not going to continue. So to do this experiment again you'll need to get a fresh plate with fresh milk, with fresh soap and fresh uh, cotton swabs here to continue doing it. But it's really, really cool. Kids love it and it's a great way to explain what a, basically a molecule is. The fact that you have these invisible things, they're bonding together, it's causing this motion, is a really neat way to learn about this stuff. I'm Jason with scienceandmath.com. Go grab these materials. It takes literally five minutes and I promise you the first time you do it, I think you'll be surprised at what you see.